Hello, this is Tony Myers on the Charisma Podcast Network, and this is Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally. Every one of these podcasts are created to guide you to acknowledge your full healing. By his wounds, you were healed. So I want you to live that out. We aren't to live a life plagued by illnesses or injuries, but we are to live our lives with a healthy body. Moses, at 120 years old, had keen eyesight and strong muscles under the Old Covenant. We can attain that as well under the blood covenant of Christ. Today's episode is no different, but before I introduce today's topic, I want you to write down a miracle you've experienced in your own body. Do it right now. Every one of us has experienced a miracle at one time. Remember the miracle. Now, write down a specific area of your body you need a miracle. Then say to yourself, Jesus healed that. So I am healed of this. Send me an email at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com with your miracle request, and I will speak life over that need. Hello, everyone. I've got a very special guest who happens to be a veteran as well. He was in the Marine Corps, and um, Jared and his wife have a ministry they co-founded together called Fireborn Ministries. And I love that name. Uh, <laughs> he also has a book out, Spirit Empowered Journaling. Correct, Jared? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. It's a Bible study journal with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, first of all, welcome, Jared. I am so glad to have you. Well, it's an honor. It's a pleasure, Tony. I know this is going to be lit as in on fire for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so it's an honor. Thank you so very much for having me on per Pushing Boundaries. And we're going to push it today. Trust me, we're going to push. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> now, as we talked a little bit before, you were spirit born. You, you were fire born when you entered the Marines. Now, Myself, I can't even imagine, wrap my head around that, really. And so I would just like you to talk on that for a minute. What was it like being in the military with dudes like Atheist Tony? And I don't know, you know, my experience was somebody come, and this is, this is me flashbacking to when I was an atheist, I would be like, there's somebody talking about Jesus. If he was in my squad, oh man, I, I was not nice. And so <laughs> I would just like, whatever your thoughts you have about being a spirit-led believer while you're in the military. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. <clears throat> I know some people may not be able to grasp how that's possible, but you know, you follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I was spirit-filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit when I was 18. I had a tremendous year in Youth with a Mission. And it was uh, November 14th of 1998 that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which was the most powerful spiritual encounter of my entire life. It was an empowerment for, to witness for Jesus. I also believe I, I received an anointing in that moment for several hours of power, love, grace, speaking in tongues, praising God, laughing, crying, you know, just 
oh man, it was so amazing. And I've, I've written about that experience before and I've taught on it as well. And then I lead people since that day in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as, the, as Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. But um, I went into Bible college and then uh, I did some youth ministry. I'd actually planted a church when I was 19, but I'd always felt this calling or this nagging or something about I needed to serve the military. I was thinking it might have, I should be a chaplain, but to be a chaplain, you have to have a master of divinity. Through a series of events, um, I kind of found myself kind of down on my luck, if you will. Uh, kind of burned out of the ministry for a little while uh, and was just kind of doing odd jobs. And I just knew, hey, I'm at this point. I don't want to live with any regrets. And God speaks through our spouses. I've got an incredible bride, Rochelle, of 20 years this year, June 29th. And uh, God speaks through her. And so I was feeling these unctions, you know, the sense of the Holy Spirit, uh, this desire. I'd watch the news and get frustrated with what, what I see going on overseas. And, you know, God spoke through my wife. God spoke through witnesses. You know, to, you, you kind of pray for two or three witnesses. That's what the scripture says. And there are these confirmations to join. And so I did it. I found myself laid off from a job uh, that that job only lasted like three weeks. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I don't want to live with any regrets. You know, the recruiter tried to say, you're not going to go to Iraq. Iraq is over. I was like, no, I'm going to Iraq. I know I'm going to Iraq. I became a field radio operator and was with the infantry, 2nd Battalion, 8th Marines, ended up in Iraq in 2007, 2008, and Afghanistan in 2009. Uh, and, you know, that could have been the driest spiritual times, but there's a sensitivity to the gospel in the Marine Corps. There's a, there are ministries. There's a missionary that I, I met. He was, you know, his daughter had actually married someone connected to uh, the warlords of Nikki Cruz. You know, um, his name escapes me right now, but I met him in 29 Palms. He encouraged me, brought me to church. Uh, I was, I surrounded myself with, some good Christians and of course Marines, man, Marines know how to party and go crazy and you know, all that. So, uh, you know, but I, I went to, on a couple of deployments, but God used me overseas, you know, in Iraq or even in Afghanistan, God was speaking to the infantrymen in dreams. And so even though, you know, I, I became a lay leader, I was able to lead Bible studies under the chaplain and stuff. Um, but I saw, I would lead small groups onesies or twosies or even groups of 15 or so in bible study but god was speaking to the infantrymen through spiritual dreams whether they are christians or not you know it's it's easy for them to respond to the gospel in boot camp or in marine combat training if you're a pogue personnel other than grunt um, so i can't really speak to the infantry side even though i was in an infantry unit but he's pouring out his spirit on these people believers and non-believers and word got around that God could use me to interpret dreams. So people would actually come find me and say, I had this dream. And some, for some dreams, it was like, that was just too much pizza last night, man. That was just your, <laughs> that was just your MRE. But there are others where it's like, God would give me the download of his Holy Spirit and I'd interpret dreams. Uh, I think one of the highlights to my time in Iraq was when my roommate, you know, we lived in these small little hooches. These, we called them the cans. And my roommate was spiritually hungry, and I was just sharing with him my encounter with the Holy Spirit, sharing the love of Jesus, and he's like, I would like that. So I led him in a prayer, and he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I left him. I was like, I'm going to go outside, and <clears throat> between us, I'm going to smoke a cigarette because it's a bad <laughs> habit. <laughs> you know, I, again, I was spiritually dry. <laughs> but a little rough around the edges, you know, but, but I went outside and I wept. I just wept. I was like, Jesus, you used me. Wow. You know, um, even now I'm getting a little emotional just thinking about it, but that was a very supernatural time during one of my most driest times, but God did that in his life and he's done that in other people's lives. And, um, I just want everybody to know I've kicked the habit. Okay. Like years ago, <laughs> but I'm going to, like I said, we're pushing boundaries, Tony. I just feel totally like I'm going to just open up, you know, open up to you right now. But you know, uh, so God still uses you 
God can use anybody where they're at, whatever job they are in. Don't just think of ministry as full-time or in the church. Think of it as right where you're placed. God can use you. Amen. I and love that. I live by that as them. well. You've said, you've said a couple of things I really like, and that is he uses us where we're at. No matter if we're in a spiritually strong place or if, if we're in that dry area, those dry areas, those dry times do happen to the best of us. And that's why I want to encourage the listeners and the viewers is God does meet us where we're at. God meant me as an atheist. Yeah, amen. And so do you recall during that time did you ever see healings at that time? Actually, uh, yes. Healing has been fairly recent, like in the last four years or so, to be normalized in my life and in my ministry. And that's also because I hang out with people that flow in it. You know, like my friend Scott, he, God uses him in healing. And then God uses me in prophecy. So it's kind of like, you know, we kind of uh, piggyback off of each other's anointing when we're together. It's like, Oh, I'll just borrow that healing for a little, that healing anointing for a little bit. You borrow the prophetic, but now it's like we're both flowing in it consistently. So he's flowing in the prophetic, I'm flowing in healing. But when I was over there, um, well, actually, like during a training, I remember sitting outside with some people, and you know they're you know they're smoking and joking, doing their thing, and this guy's like, I got this really bum knee, and I was like, Well, Jesus can heal that. He's like, What? I was like, Yeah. It's like, you want, can I pray for you right now? He's like, well, I asked, can I pray for you? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. But I think he was thinking, I was like, I'll pray for him on my spare time. So just without even touching him, I said, Jesus, in, in the name of Jesus, heal his knee. I command it healed and whole in Jesus' name. And then I said, now start moving it. Because in healing, you still have to take a step of faith. Don't just leave it. Just be like, now try to do something, you know. Um, Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not any of that. But by faith, the person starts taking the challenge, if you will, and starts moving their knee. So I'm moving my knee now. And then he's like, what just happened? And I was like, Jesus loves you. Jesus just healed you. So, yeah. Um, and that's just happening. You know, that again, that can happen in your workplace. But that was one of the, the number of healings that I've seen um, on my time in service. Amen. I love that. And Jesus is a healer no matter no matter where we're at. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about prophecy and dreams. There are so many people, and this might be a two-part question, actually. <laughs> there, one of the number one things I hear and that people want to come to me thinking that they don't hear from the Holy Spirit. So first of all, let me try to break this down to two simple questions. <laughs> With the prophetic, has it been your experience? And, and you have actually answered the question. Unbelievers have experienced dreams. Mm -hmm. When, when should the point be that you seek someone to interpret for you or just asking the Holy Spirit to have the interpretation? Where do you stand on that as far as to somebody, a dream comes out of the blue and their first initial is, oh my gosh, who do I go to? I know it's something. Who do I go to? What do I do? And then also, um, well, let's stick right there for a minute. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, as if, if you've had a spiritual dream, ask the Holy Spirit. One of the first things you should do is write it down. When it's very vivid, when it's very in technicolor, you know, and it's really sticking to your mind, like, and you know, hey, this is, this could be a literal dream. This could be a metaphor, but write it down almost as it soon as is, you know. Is the vividness 
in in color a sign that yes it is a dream from the lord absolutely because if it's kind of gross disgusting or even black and white that may be the enemy talking to you if there's if there's if it's not clear you know you could push it to the side you know um and, and yes the vividness the 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 color the you know and then how god speaks to you know know how god speaks to you right uh honestly i'll say don't use a dream dictionary those things are great tools to confirm what the holy spirit has spoken to you you should develop your own dream language between you and god because a metaphor like say tony a car might mean a car to you but it might mean a ministry to me so I don't want someone's recycled interpretation. I also just want the Holy Spirit to highlight the true interpretation of, of the meaning because, you know, that, that vehicle could mean something totally different. It could mean a vehicle of finances. It could mean a vehicle of ministry. It could just mean a really cool car that you like, you know. So really seek the Holy Spirit first and foremost for yourself. And then you don't have to necessarily bring it up to people. Um, usually the conversation starts to showing up and then you could kind of bring it up if you want. Or, you know, if you haven't, if it's kind of still sticking to your mind and God has not given you the interpretation, because first and foremost, seek Jesus yourself. If he doesn't give you the interpretation first, then maybe you can kind of talk to someone who is more, you know, stronger in the faith or flows in that gifting. Or honestly, God might just bring someone to you. And you would have no idea. It's just a natural conversation. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, it comes up. And then they, you know, maybe even the conversation flows. And you're like, wait, they're talking about my dream. Or you could bring up your dream and God uses them to interpret. Remember, it's God that gives the interpretation. It's not that person. You know, from the book of Daniel, God gave Daniel the interpretation. So I hope that this kind of helps people out there who, who have dreams or, uh, you know, may be confused in time especially if you just spend time and you pay the price for the anointing, you know, you'll have more dream interpretations. I don't get all the dream interpretations that I get, you know, in time I'll start, you know, again, it comes up in conversation with other people, it just flows naturally or, um, or, you know, just through intimacy with Jesus, he'll start giving you that. Or here's another secret. If it was a dream, like I had one the, last week, and it was, it was about an old friend of mine from Bible college. But there was a word at the end. There was like this angel in the dream that gave me just one word. But, but through the course of the day, uh, I kind of forgot that word. But then I asked the Holy Spirit just to, you know, remind me of what that one word was. Because I understood what the dream meant about my friend from Bible college. And then just as I'm telling my wife, you know, sometimes as you speak the dream out, you'll get the download, you'll get the interpretation. So I'm just telling my wife, I had this dream about so-and-so from Bible college. And I start describing the dream. Next thing I know, the word came to me. I was like, boom, got it. <laughs> so what I hear is don't stress about it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? If, if you forgot the dream, if you didn't write it down, because again, that, that dream I had just the other week, you know, I woke up and I, I, I had to get busy. I wrote it down later, but like, just ask the Holy Spirit if the dream kind of floats away and you're like, no, that was a significant spiritual dream. Ask Jesus to give it to you again. And he will, because he loves you and he loves to talk to his kids. And as you'd mentioned, unbelievers, when I was in the Marine Corps, you know, God would speak to unbelievers because he loves them. Joel 2, 28 to 32 says the spirit will be poured out on all flesh. I believe, and that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Peter, Amen. on the day of Pentecost, um, spoke forth Joel 2, 28 through 32. And what the Holy Spirit does is glorifies Jesus, leads unbelievers to Jesus. So if an unbeliever comes to me and they've had a spiritual dream from God, I will always tell them and point them to Jesus, to his love. Amen. Amen. I love that. And that is so incredible because that really is what he's doing he he woos himself to us and so he's coming to us and he's wooing himself and that is incredible and for myself 
I can look back when I was an atheist and recognize times that the Holy Spirit was trying to do just that. Now, at the time, I was unreceptive, but boy, has he used those times now when I am receptive. And so, so much, would you agree with this statement that we can hinder the Holy Spirit through our self-effort, being self-centered and putting a stress on a relationship with the Holy Spirit where we feel we have a responsibility to make things happen. Absolutely. The key is yieldedness. The key is surrender to Jesus. You know, you and I both know if we've got this thing that we've been struggling with, this problem, whatever it is, we could even call it a sin, you know, whatever it is. When we strive to do it ourselves, because we just have to be so holy, we will mess it up. We will fail. But if we surrender and yield, you know, that's the key. In time, wow, well, I've been set free from this. I'm no longer doing that. Wow. You know, God gave me the interpretation. You know, I didn't have to just, you know, you, you, okay, I'm going to say this. We, we cannot prostitute the prophetic, okay? Freely you've been, free, freely you've been given, freely, you know, give, or freely we've received, we'll freely give, right? So people that charge for dream interpretations, prophecies, and whatever, whoa, 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 I'm just, don't want to cross that, Right? But sure, people want to donate to your ministry after being blessed. Okay, cool. That's between them and God. But, you know, that's, that's stepping into, into self-effort too. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, you know, let's not go there. Let's just yield to the Holy Spirit. Let's just surrender to him and walk in victory. Tony, you and I are sons of the living God. People listening to this, they're sons, they're daughters of the king. When you know who you are in Christ, you let him do the work through you as you're surrendered. Because when it's self-effort, you will fail. When it's self-effort, the platform will fall apart in time, right? But when you're yielded and you're walking in true love, you know, grounded in, in God's word, grounded in God's love, you know, he'll bring it, he'll bring it all forward. He'll, he'll promote you. He'll do all that stuff. Just let him do it through you and just know it's his ministry. It's his life. And he's the one being glorified through you. So I, I just kind of hope that that encourages people to yield daily. You know, some people call it die daily, but we in Christ are no longer sinners. We are saints. We still have a proclivity to sin, do things, bad habits, things that we have to walk through. But the terminology for sinner, no, when, we're now a saint. And once we're in Christ, we are a saint. That's who we are. We are his. And so we don't have to have this self-martyrdom mentality like, oh, poor me. I'm just a wretched sinner. I'm just, you know, all that every day. No, we, because of Christ's victory on the cross, we walk in his victory. We enforce his victory. We walk out his dominion mandate and we're saints think that changes everything when we know who we are and whose we are. Renewing of our minds. Amen. And that's what brings about transformation, not trying to force the issue. Let, let the Holy Spirit bring, be the one to initiate. And I think that's a powerful thing because one thing, when for instance, when we're specifically trying to get healed for something, then we take and we put that stress on ourselves and many leadership in the body of Christ, they do that without realizing it and put stress on the person that is seeking healing, seeking a prophetic word, this applies across the board to everything in God's kingdom. 
and then we feel we have to be the one to bring it into fruition when Ooh. that the truth is exactly the opposite. We can stop the bottle up by trying to get involved and trying to push the issue. Oftentimes, I think one of the number one statements I hear Christians say is, well, Tony, you hear from the Holy Spirit, great. I ain't never heard a word from the Holy Spirit. How do I hear the Holy Spirit? What would your response be? How did they respond to the gospel in the first place? The Holy Spirit was speaking to them one way or another, and maybe that's how God still speaks to them. Now, we mature, we grow, and we make ourselves available to however he wants to speak to us, but listen to a still small voice. You know, uh, I've had uh, uh, Dalton Beckering and Deborah Ann Veltizen on my podcast recently, and we kind of push the boundaries on that. I'd mentioned how here we are in the charismatic world, the prophetic movement, the apostolic coverings that we have. And so a lot of people try to push the spectacular. But really, look at scripture. When Elijah went up on the mountain, when he was running from Jezebel, God was not in the spectacular display of the earthquake, the fire, you know, all that stuff, the rocks cracking. But when he heard the still small voice, he heard the whisper of God. That's when he stepped out and he received a commission to uh, anoint a prophet, Elisha, but also to coronate a king just from the still small voice. So just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Remember how you responded to the gospel. You know, what, that's, what that felt like, what it sensed like, what maybe you heard from the Holy Spirit, maybe what you saw. And remember that, and then just go back to the fundamentals. If, if someone listening doesn't think that God speaks to them, go back to that time and be like, oh, start being sensitive. Just ask the Holy Spirit, will you make me sensitive to hear you like I did when I responded to the gospel? And then you'll start, you'll start hearing it, but also just listen for the whisper. Listen for the whisper, because uh, he loves to talk to you because you're his kid. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to have conversation with you. And honestly, you can even get started. Jumpstart yourself. Get a journal. It's like you're writing a letter, Dear Jesus. And then just start letting it flow as you're listening to worship music. Start writing down what it is that you're hearing from God or sensing or feeling. And you can even say, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. I'm hearing this. Or even just here, this is a direct letter from, from Jesus to you, you know. So actually, instead of writing it to, to dear Jesus, write it from Jesus. Dear Jared, I love you. And then start flowing from there and see what the Holy Spirit does. I love that. That is, it's free and it's free flowing. And I've, act, I've actually done that before. And I was amazed at some of the stuff that I wrote because I wasn't using my intellect. I wasn't using my brain. And so things just seemed to flow even more natural. And in my own walk, um, the times when I want to dismiss it as myself, those are the times when, and this is something I've learned, is if I'm going to throw something away because it sounds like my voice, yet it's unusual and it isn't something I would ordinarily say, I grab a hold of it even harder because more than likely that is the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense to you? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, he also enjoys, I mean, he, he's smiling over us. He's hanging out with us. He's within us. He's around us. You know, he empowers us. He's smiling over us as we're spending time with Abba, Daddy God. He's, he enjoys it probably way more than we do. 
you know, sometimes we want the feeling, we want all that, but like, you know, just be present with him. Be present with him and allow him to do what he wants to do through you. And just know that, wow, daddy's enjoying this. He, he loves time with his kids. So, yeah. Which is the whole reason he put his Holy Spirit into us. Because he loves spending time with his kids. And it should be a daily, hourly thing. And all we have to do is be aware he's in us. We don't have to have the goose pimples and all that. Um, it's the awareness that he's there. He's not out in the ozone somewhere. Um, so what I just heard was, let me hear one prophetic message that the Lord gave for you that he gave to you specifically for yourself that changed that time period that you were in. Does that make sense? The yeah. way I said it? <laughs> so, um, well, and you know, I, I'd like people to know that there are praying believers in the military. You know, there are, uh, and again, everybody's got a job to do. You know, we've all got a job to do. Um, the Holy Spirit works in signs and wonders. He loves to talk to his kids. He was talking to the Marines. You know, there, there are Bible studies. There are church services. You know, people, uh, there are great chaplains. Um, there are some who aren't. <laughs> you know? But God speaks through his kids to his kids. And so even in the most driest time, you know, uh, I'm trying to jog my memory about, you know, I was praying in tongues in combat, okay? Like, you know, June 22nd, 2009 was the first time I was in a, a tick, troops in contact. And uh, it was a prolonged firefight, but I was praying in tongues. I was praying for my twins who were just born a few weeks before who I hadn't met yet. I didn't meet them until the day before Thanksgiving of 2009 when we got home. You know, um, I was holding on under the word of God. I, you know, when we hit IEDs, I was praying in tongues and my staff sergeant was like, go for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I got to be on the radio calling up a nine line too. And then, you know, I'm putting it, putting the radio down and praying in the spirit. And my, my, my gunner, you know, he was born and raised. Uh, I think he was a PK, but, or elder kid, you know, and he's like, he was in the assemblies of God. He's like, go for it. Just go for it. He's like, is that tongues? Go for it. You know, um, the Holy Spirit really, you know, like he, he loves to talk to us. I would say that during my times of deployment, um, I didn't see any real prophetic utterances. We saw a, a friend of mine, Sergeant Black, was one of the few people water baptized in the Helmand River Valley. Um, you know, uh, we saw God do amazing things, even in the midst of despair and the, oh gosh, the dirt and the grime and the combat and, you know, the, the coldness that eventually comes over us, you know, but what I know is the best prophetic word I think I had was the, the scripture, the word of God, the word of God is living. The word of God is active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. And that context is Jesus because he is the one that judges thoughts and intentions of the heart. So I had to hold on to Jesus and Tony, I, I came back from Afghanistan in 09. I know that that wasn't like a spectacular prophetic word, uh, but I came back and in time, you know, I went through a lot of darkness, a lot of darkness, years of darkness of the combat cocktail, multiple medications, you know, weight fluctuations, all that. The but night sweats. Oh, uh, I went into, um, uh, all kinds of therapies and then there's weird therapies that they offer that I'm like, no, I'll, I'll stick to Jesus. Okay. Like they start giving these, you know, combat Marines, you know, all kinds of Eastern type of therapies. It's like, I'm going to stay away from that stuff. I'm going to, you quoted Romans chapter 12 verses one through one and two earlier. 
I'm going to transform my mind. I'm going to reframe my thinking. I'm going to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to memorize the scripture, renew my mind. And it wasn't until November of 2018 that I received a supernatural healing of post-traumatic stress disorder. Like, you know, uh, and that was a long process, years of darkness. And, um, you know, my wife stuck it through, man. She is a trooper, you know. Uh, we went through some stuff and in time I was, I was back in ministry during a lot of that time, you know, uh, and the church I was at was full of grace discovery church in Jacksonville, North Carolina, right next to Camp Lejeune. They, they knew what I was going through, but they loved me. My, my pastor, Ron, he was like, Jared, when he was offering me the job, I was like, what? I got PTSD. And he looks at me, he's like, Jared, there's nothing in you that scares me. He pulled out the gold. So I surround myself with positivity and, you know, still years of, of stuff, but I held on, on to the word of God. I held on to what God had spoken to me about my future, which is, you know, from 20 some years ago, he, I received prophetic words about media, about large events, about all that. And now I'm, I'm just now walking in that, you know, uh, scripture, David was anointed king. But how many years did it take for him to actually become the king? About 20 years. He became the king of Judah and then the king of Israel. It took about 20 years for him to walk fully in that prophetic word. Um, you mentioned, I hope I'm not going too long here, but you'd mentioned how some people tend to go into self-effort. Like some people think that the prophetic word that's a here and now, like, boom, I have to do this now. Actually, what you have to do first Spend time in the presence of God. Do that daily. Yield, surrender, and then he'll just naturally, as you continue to do that, it will naturally be fulfilled. And it could be a year from now. It could be 20 years from now. Don't walk out in your own self ever. Continue to yield and be submitted to, to Jesus, the word of God. Amen. I want to make, a, I think, a very important point here. While Jared and I had severe PTSD as well. Now, uh, with myself, when I was healed from Lou Gehrig's disease, that is when my healing happened from the PTSD as well. But the point I want to make, so many times people hold back from ministering because they don't, they feel like, they're not mature enough. They feel there's a hundred excuses people use. But I'm glad that Jared brought up he was ministering during this time to people. He was ministering where he was at. And that is all the Holy Spirit asks us to do is we minister at the level we're at. We don't have to stress or strain about it. And so if you're going through things, come on, we are all going through something. <laughs> Name one time in our lives where we don't have some issue. So for those that feel the Holy Spirit, and I'm talking about, ministry in any form not just a position but in your daily life ministering to a widow that you meet at Walmart any type of ministering as long as you're ministering from where you're at it will be fine would you like to expand on that just a bit yeah well the scripture in the proverbs I don't I, I know the I don't know this, the exact reference, but people can look this up. I think it's in Proverbs, but correct me if I'm wrong. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So if you are pouring yourself out and you're serving others one way or another, whether that's you're making blankets for premature babies, whether that's, you know, giving stuff, volunteering at, a, you know, a, like, here in this community, we've got this place that people donate stuff, sells it, you know, a thrift store, and the money goes into missions and overseas, or you're wanting to prophesy over your cashier, whatever 
type of refreshing that you're doing, whatever you're going through, the Holy Spirit will pour out a special grace upon you for that, so that you are refreshed. And there's healing in the process. Again, I mentioned earlier, sometimes you have to do something to receive your healing. It's a step of faith. So if we're going through something, financial hardship, marital issues, um, you know, PTSD, severe anxiety, start doing something. The problem is having people just sit and stew. And this is something the military should, should probably reform. You know, you come back from a deployment, get back to work as soon as possible. Vacation a little bit, but get back to work because after 30 to 60, 90 days of doing nothing, it starts hitting you. But start doing something, get refreshed, uh, you know, exercise, eat healthy, all of that. Go back to the fundamentals and start refreshing other people and you will be refreshed. And that, that just goes like, you know, if, if things are going bad around me, okay, well, what am I going to do? If the devil's if, you know, coming to steal, kill, and destroy, I'm going to strike harder. So if he strikes me or something, oh, he, you know, that's one, I'm going to take three. Okay, I'm going to prophesy over three people. I'm going to pray for three people to be healed. I'm going to give a little bit more money to this, this ministry or that ministry or help this poor person. Or like you'd said, the widow, you know, I'm going to bring a meal to this, this couple that just had a baby, refresh others in the process. God refreshes you and you'll have breakthrough. It might take, it might be real quick. It might be instantaneous. It might take years, but continue to refresh others and be on the mission that God has called you to, to do. Amen. Uh, I love that. Now let's talk about speaking in tongues. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get my coffee real quick. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> I will take a sip right after you do. But speaking in tongues, I want you to address people that, um, and I'm sure we both know plenty of people they're hesitant. They don't feel like they can do it. And, you know, so many people um, are scared of it. When, how important is it to you? I, me personally, it's probably 90% of my prayer life. I'm speaking in tongues underneath my breath. I'm speaking in tongues in my heart. Um, when I'm at Walmart. So just speak on that and towards a person that, that is shying away from it. I'm going to let you go ahead. <laughs> well, if you want more of God, ask. You know, it's a gift. It's a spiritual gift. God loves to give gifts to his children. And all you have to do is ask, how much more will he give you the Holy Spirit if you ask? You know, and... In context, the, the scripture I'm referencing, you know, if if your kid asks you for bread, will you give him a snake? Absolutely not. You'll give him the bread. If you ask for the Holy Spirit, he'll give you the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. It's free. It's available. Uh, it empowers you uh, for works of service. It helps you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, connect with Jesus. It actually, for me, in my experience, uh, God was speaking to me when I was younger, but after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, the other spiritual gifts became enhanced. I was able to see clearly. I was able to hear more. I was able to uh, discern more after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's been a process, uh, you know, since November 14th of 1998, you know, it's been, you know, learning and growing, failing, you know, uh, just, just a process, right? But praying in tongues is a daily thing for me. Uh, Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. You, when you ask, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Ask Jesus to baptize you because he is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And it's as if he's laying hands on you. And then you yield to him. You worship him. And for me, you know, I heard the word in my spiritual ear, just this one syllable and in the my, my mentor at the time, he's like, it might be a silly one syllable word or a phrase, but you start speaking it out. 
So I heard it in my spiritual ear, and then I saw it spelled in my, my spiritual mind. And I started repeating it over and over. So you do the speaking as the Holy Spirit does the enabling. Uh, the Holy Spirit's not going to, once in a great while, I've seen it happen, where the Holy Spirit takes a jaw and just blah, 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 you know. Uh, but for the most part, it's just very gentle. You start speaking it out, just like when you step out in, f in faith to receive your healing. You do something. You start speaking out with the Holy Spirit initiated. Now, I don't want to pick up your spiritual language, Tony. If you're praying over me, uh, I'm not into jump-starting people. You know, like, repeat after me and you got this. Listen, I tell people, because people go through my e-course and I do spiritual empowering coaching calls and phone calls and stuff for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I tell them, let the Holy Spirit initiate it to you. I will pray in tongues, but don't pick up one of my words. Get your own from the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives you the initiating word or phrase in a language you don't know, you don't understand. And to you, it might be silly. Because honestly, when I heard that first and I saw it in my mind, I, I laughed. I was like, heh. You know, <laughs> I was like, heh. But... Uh, because my last name is Lasky, the word I got, you know, was key, K-I. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I was just like speaking it out and then more words flowed. And then the Holy Spirit came upon me and power and waves and love and electricity. And it's like a, a light hit my head and came out of my mouth. And, I, and I, I came out of the drug culture before that. So my encounter with the baptism of the Holy Spirit was what I needed. And for the next two and a half hours, about three or four different waves of power, of love, of grace, of electricity, of just oh, amazingness. And, you know, uh, I've seen thousands of people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit since. You know, again, that's the name of my ministry, Fireborn, Born of Fire, the baptism of fire. You know, it empowers you for works of service. You do the speaking as the Holy Spirit does the enabling, and he'll give you more and then you know it might be three seconds it might be 10 minutes it might be two hours it might be like a few days like charles finney and some of these other people revivalists over the years you know however god wants to give it to you he'll give it to you and then pray in that's that, that spiritual language every day it's like a baby saying goo goo gaga in time it's mama dada right in time it's hey, mom, dad, can you give me the keys to the car and a couple bucks for gas, right? It becomes a full-blown language. So praying it every day, and it might be the same phrases over and over, but do five minutes, do 10 minutes, do whatever it takes when you're driving, when you're walking, when you're at Walmart, don't cause a scene. Just, you know, like just, <laughs> you don't want to be one of those people, you know, and hopefully you're in Walmart, not in your PJs, but I don't judge. But, you know, just wherever you go, pray in the spirit, and then, you know, you could even alternate. You could even ask for the interpretation. You want to grow mm -hmm. in interpreting tongues? Interpret your own tongues. Ask. Ask the Holy Spirit, what am I praying? And then maybe you're praying praises. Maybe you're in intercession. Maybe you're in some type of spiritual warfare prayer. Or maybe you're just in worship tongues, whatever it is. And you could even write that down too. Write down the interpretations or ask the Holy Spirit to download you what it is in, in the language, your native language that you speak. And you grow in it every day. And um, honestly, I don't know where I'd be without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I was doing some crazy stuff as a teenager, but I encountered him at the right time in life. And that changed the trajectory of my life. Sure, I went into the Marine Corps and some other things, I just have to go, go work and make money elsewhere. You know, I've always had one foot in some type of ministry, but praying in tongues is, has been key for me. And it edifies you. It, you know, there's, I've got a lot of teachings on this. But for the most part, speaking in tongues edifies you. Uh, it, it builds you up. Prophecy builds other people up. But if there's anybody out there, I should say this before handing it back to you, Tony. Um, some people are like, well, it's a lesser gift. Mm -hmm. There is no lesser gift. You know, when Paul said, I would rather you prophesy, he still also said, I want all of you to speak in tongues, but I'd rather have you prophesy. And then he says, you know, prophecy is the greater gift. Well, in context, when Paul's saying that, prophecy is greater in edifica edification, encouraging, comforting others. So it's greater in edification rather than if I just laid hands on you and I'm speaking in tongues over you. Uh, that's edifying me, but not necessarily you. You know, prophecy is greater in edifying you. 
Speaking in tongues is edifying the person praying it in, but all the gifts are equal. They're all equal. And that's different than the offices, the fivefold offices, right? The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. But in, among spiritual gifts, it's all equal. You know, but I believe that all of us, as Paul even said, all can speak in tongues. You know, and it's a doorway into more of God. It's it's not an ending. And I've been part of groups that are like, okay, now that you're baptized in the spirit, that's it. No, it's actually the beginning of an incredible walk of the more of God and in his anointing and in his power. Amen. And that's the thing is prophecy. That's, you know, Paul, Paul stresses, I would rather speak in. Yeah. Help me out. Here. <laughs> I would rather I have intelligible speak words, five words. In a language can be understood than 10,000 words that not because that he was talking about for a congregation, for a gathering. It is better that I prophesy over someone in language they understand than speak 10,000 words in tongues. So you're looking at the setting in that case. <laughs> was within a congregation. Yep. And they're going crazy too. They were like going up there, uh, you know, go, doing their thing. And it's like, what's, what's going on? You know, whatever that looked like in their house church meetings or even on temple grounds, you know, they were going a little crazy. So he was like, Hey, you know, prophesy over people rather than just, you know, right. Going exactly. all out. And that's why he was given the rules and regulations, but. Exactly. You know, it's so, a beautiful encounter, man. It really is. I want to encourage everybody. Ask. Just ask, and he'll give it to you. Ask. And it's ask, believing that the answer is already yes. Mm -hmm. The answer is already yes. And so we should be asking in anticipation that something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if Jared agrees with this. He's the initiator, which mm -hmm. I agree with. But guess what? Most of the time, we still have to engage our vocal cords. As Jared said, you know, with me, it was simply T mm -hmm. is the way it started. And what... What I tell people, which you already told everybody, you stole my thunder. That's good, though. You're the guest. Same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> is it is just like a baby language. And then, just like a baby learning how to talk, at first, they've got no understanding. At first, they are copying from the parent. Um, but they're very simple. Ooh, ooh ga ga. The more you speak it, the more sensitive you will become to the Holy Spirit initiating it, and the more it becomes a language. And several, as Jared mentioned, you know, it, it it's going to vary mm -hmm. because it's Holy Spirit initiated. He's giving you what you need. And I also love the fact that Jared brought up, ask the Holy Spirit, for the interpretation. He's happy to give it. <laughs> oh, he loves to give it. He, and, and, you know, it's worship. It's adoring Jesus, you know, and then it could become a prayer, you know, it becomes a, a language. And it's like, you know, when people get brought up to my mind, I'll start praying in tongues automatically. You know, it, it becomes your prayer language and then communing with God and a direct line to his presence. You know, um, I've heard people say, you know, the enemy doesn't know what you're saying. They're scared when you pray in tongues. Keep going for it. Amen. Keep going for it. Grow in it. Develop it. Um, I've, I've had articles against me. I've, I've written articles on developing your spiritual language, growing in it, you know, and the key is intimacy and just praying in it every day. But I've had these amazing articles, uh, not really amazing, but just against me for you can't develop tongues. 
no, you can't. It's a language. Jack Hayford has a whole book on this. Okay. He talks <laughs> about the spiritual prayer language. Amen. So, you know, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I do love and what, what I've done was when I'm writing my books, yeah, I'm speaking in tongues and having a reliance on the Holy Spirit and knowing he's always feeding into us, not from the outside. You know, I find one of my frustrations is people view God as somewhere out there. Hmm. And they talk that way. He's within us. Everything flows from the Holy Spirit outward when we're sensitive to him and to that, then it's coming from the inside out. And we, we, don't, we don't need to think that God's aloof somewhere out there. When I was an atheist, I thought God was aloof because he didn't exist, amen? Mm. <laughs> and so I guess I'm just extra sensitive to he's within us he is operating through us, through the inside, and then out of the mouth. And so I want to get your closing thoughts. Um, and we mentioned firebornministry.com. Uh, if you want to mention other ways to get in touch. And of course, um, now you've got two podcasts, right? One with yeah. your wife. And... Then you've, you, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I've got. There's no way I could forget the name of your podcast, but go ahead. <laughs> Adventures, it's called Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. Uh, lots of fun. I'm in the third season right now. Um, had incredible interviews. I've got Tony Myers coming up on my podcast. Uh, <laughs> I've had in, uh, all kinds of incredible people on the program. It's interview based. Um, and uh, it's on the Charisma Podcast Network. It's anywhere people listen to podcasts. And then I do have a members only, Spirit Empowered Living with Jared and Michelle Lasky. That's a lot of my uh, coaching content, webinars, things like that for um, an exclusive audience, if you will. And then uh, people could give towards that. And that, though, that goes into rescuing people from sex trafficking, which has really been on my wife's heart. And also um, some missions opportunities we have coming up as well in the Dominican Republic, uh, reaching out to community. Uh, so yeah, I, I love doing what I do. I've coached a lot of people even in podcasting and having lots of fun with it. So y'all check Jared out. He is a Holy spirit brother who, who I have come to very much respect and I've learned from. And so check him out, check him out, his wife out. Be blessed with that. All right, your final thoughts, Brother Jared. Well, I'd like to just pray and activate people in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if that's okay. Absolutely okay. So if anybody's listening to this or watching this right where you are, you could be driving, keep your eyes on the road, but you could be at home uh, sitting in a hammock. You could be sitting in a chair uh, or in the kitchen washing dishes or at the gym. The Holy Spirit can baptize you with his wonderful, wonderful power and his grace. So Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. So right where you are, ask the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, will you fill me up? Holy Spirit, will you fill me up? Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, you're the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. Will you give me the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Will you give me the gift of speaking in tongues? And maybe you've spoken in tongues before, but you, you buried it. You know, just say, Jesus, will you reinitiate that in my life right now? In Jesus' name. And worship him. Thank him. Thank Jesus. And now is a silly phrase or small word that you've never heard or spoken before comes to mind or comes up welling up within your spirit like a, like a river. Or, or you see it in your mind or you hear it in your spiritual ears. As you're worshiping Jesus, as he's laying his hands on you, start speaking that out and repeat it over and over in Jesus' name. 
Jesus name. Whew, right there. <laughs> Holy Spirit, fill them up. I bless them as you baptize them in the wonderful Holy Spirit as they're speaking in tongues now in Jesus name for your glory for your glory. Now tell him thank you in, in, in your native language. Tell him thank you in English and switch back to that phrase and those words over and over and over in Jesus' name. He's giving you more. He's giving you more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. Wow. Some of you are receiving that now. You're receiving that as you're watching, as you're listening in. I bless you. Keep praying in it. More power, more love upon you. Ask him for more. Give them more. We give, just ask them, Jesus, will you give me more? More. In Jesus' name. Now, I don't know how to end that prayer, but if you're listening to this, guys, just keep praying in that. Keep praying in that. In Jesus' name. Amen. That was powerful. Well, Jared, thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us the Holy Spirit, and I just speak over every single person, be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing. Thank you for watching my channel. Now, hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. There you go. Click it. All right. Good. Write a comment. If you would like prayer, write a comment for prayer. Give me some feedback. What about this teaching helped you? What didn't help you? Now, if you would like to partner with Outside the Four Walls Ministry, my ministry, then simply go to TonyBelieves.com. And we appreciate you wanting to partner with us to reach the lost and see everyone heal. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing.